Davis Creek Campground is one of our all-time favorites. Whenever we're going to the Kootenays, we think of this location. How can we work this in? How can we fit this in as part of a tour? Uh, we absolutely love it. One of the tricks to Davis Creek, just north of Caslow, is that there's two campsites that are really close together. So you've got Lost Ledge and Davis Creek. Both are great campsites. It's kind of smaller. It feels like you're really camping in terms of being far away from a city, far away from services, but you've got the lake so close, a limited amount of sites. So it's really kind of, it gives you that rustic romance that you look for when you're camping. That's what we love about that site yet you are easily accessible by your trailer. You kind of arrive to this campground, it's easy to get there. Um, you've got all the big services that you really need, yet you're a little further away, so it's fun. Must do's at Davis Creek. You've got to get in the water, you've got to go for a swim. The water's clear, it's cold but it's a must do. You've got to spend some time on, uh, on the water edge, on the shore, lots of skipping rocks, some fun things like that. Anybody that's a fisherman, you got to take the rod and reel. You, can, you hardly even need to cast. The water's coming out of the creek and the fish are all right there. You can just cast and catch fish. It's really easy and there's some amazing uh, good fish to catch right there, five minutes from your site, or depending on which part of the site you're in, it's seconds from your site to that creek, and the fishing there is top notch. One of the other must-dos that we would put on the list, but with some caution for whoever is going, uh, there are some old mine shafts and some hikes nearby. You are going straight up to the top. If you want to go hiking and you want to get up to the top, it's straight up. It's a pretty, pretty large hike for, for our skill set. We found it was, it was enough. We, we wouldn't have gone uh, all the way over to New Denver as the hike can go. But in that area, lots of fun. And on the way, uh, we were given a tip by an old local who'd, who'd been in the area for a long time. And he said, following just across the highway, Follow the creek up. Don't follow the trails up to the edge. Follow the creek up. And he said, you can find an old mine shaft. We did find it. Uh, so we had some fun in there. We took some friends through when we were at Davis Creek for a second time. And uh, it's fun. The kids really like it. It's not a very long uh, little mine shaft. It was just some kind of access point or something. It's pretty small. Uh, but it is fun and it, uh, neat to go through. So we would put that on the must-do list as well. Uh, we would also say must do, spend some time in Caslow. Beautiful, cute little Kootenay city. Uh, there's a brewery there, there's some restaurants, uh, there's uh, some history in the area, of course, with all the mining and the, the development that happened through Kootenay Lake. Tons of fun to learn about that as well. So gotta spend a day in Caslow being a tourist. The approach can be tricky because like I said, two campgrounds. So Lost Ledge, you'll see a sign, Provincial Park, you start slowing down. If you're going to Davis Creek like we were, don't get psyched out by that first sign, go past it. As you're moving north, I think it's about five minutes north until you get to the, ta the, to the Davis Creek uh, Pull, turn in. That's where you need to slow down. It comes quick. It's kind of a sharp corner. You're coming down the hill and you take a quick right and you almost do a 180. So you need to slow down a little early. Of course, if you're pulling a trailer like we are, be aware of that too. It's a fairly tight corner, so slow it down. People have dug it out because they're pulling trailers out. So of course they're pulling two wheel drive. It gets a little rutted out. Just something to be aware of. Uh, it comes kind of quick. Just watch for that. As you come into the campground, 
The first uh, thing you'll pass is the group site, really big group site. If you're looking for a group campground, this is a big one, but it's quite far from the water, whereas the rest of the campground is right near the lake, which is awesome. So as you are coming down, you'll see a little bit of a pull off after the first couple sites. There's a few sites right on your left as you're coming in, and there's a small little pull off. That's the spot to get water. The other ones will block the road and there's only a couple others. That's the best one for water. So make sure to do that when you can. Uh, you'll have to get as far over as you can so people can get by. Like we said, smaller campground. So really, you're not likely to block someone, but I just hate the pressure, right? You're, you're filling up with water. Someone's behind you. They're trying to get to their site or whatever. Uh, and you don't, then you feel pressured. You can't get the water or you're rushing. You make mistakes, whatever it might be. The campground or the road isn't level, so you probably won't get a full tank. We try to leave it to go a little slow, let some of the air come out so we can fill up as best we can. And we do carry that big blue jug with us as well for our drinking water. We fill that there. And if, let's say, we were having a hard time fill our, filling our fresh tank, we would use one of those to add to it. So if you've got something like that in a little funnel, that's what we carry, you can top it off. So it's not really a big deal if you can't get a full tank, but uh, something to be aware of there. In the campground itself, uh, it kind of has two, two wings, if you will. There's a newer one, which is where we've stayed twice, and we've had friends stay on the other side. It's a little bit busier uh, on the other side. So again, those corners are a little bit tight if you're making them. If you've got a 30-foot trailer like some of our friends did, it can be tricky to get those in there. So you just have to watch your directions and try not to pin yourself in a, in the at the very end, because it's almost like a cul-de-sac at the end. And if you've got a 20-foot truck, in a 30 foot trailer it's it's going to be a stressful moment that you can avoid the check-in process is a little bit loose you as you're pulling into the site there's a little bit of space to pull off where i mentioned filling up with water near there there is a host site i haven't seen them there regularly and the park operator does come through daily they'll check you in so both times we've been we just pull in find our site nobody's been there it's always being cleaned up and ready to go um, so no hesitation that way fill up fill up with water back in your site unpack get ready to go and they will probably come to you at some point just to check you in uh, the host was around enough for specific questions, we were able to track them down um, and they were on their site a certain amount of set hours and they had a sign when they were there. So it was pretty straightforward that way. Uh, but no formal check-in process, no gatehouse, no staff at the gate. Uh, pull in, use your site and go from there. Davis Creek, not all the sites are reservable. It's not a very popular site still. Uh, maybe by the time you're watching, it will be. So reserve if you can. There are first come, first serve sites. The site itself is divided really into two pieces. There's a reservable section and a first come, first serve section. So um, book and reserve, that's the best way to go because if depending on where you're coming from, this site can be a little bit of a journey uh, from most of BC. Our preference is site number one, number two. We think those are the best for our setup. We love the views, the spot, the location within the campground is perfect. Um, if you're going with kids and they're gonna ride the bikes and you wanna be in a private section, down at the other end by the turnaround is a quiet little spot. Really nobody's gonna be down there. Uh, good size site, number 10 at the end as well. Um, so that is a really comfortable spot if you're gonna have the kids out on the bikes, that kind of thing. Uh, and if you can't get a reservable spot, there are lots of first come first serve when we were there on our first stay at davis creek a couple of years ago it was not very busy um, you could have come into the first come first serve without much of a problem by the time we went back this year it was full it was packed on the first come first serve as well as the reservations so it may be getting discovered now so get out there before anyone discovers it There are no amenities buildings. Uh, there are outhouses that are your standard outhouses, no flush toilets, um, no shower house. You are bringing what you need in that case. Uh, if you're bringing your trailer, that's the best you're gonna do for the shower. Keeping in mind, there is no on-site services. There's no hookups at your site. 
so it's not as though you're going to be plugged into power running water and sewer so you're definitely uh, going to be using your your rv to its capacities there is no playground or uh, infrastructure for kids at davis creek it's uh, i wouldn't want that to turn anyone off of davis creek if you have little ones we've gone now with uh, rory uh, was 18 months here while we were at davis creek and she loved it. She absolutely had the greatest time. But your traditional camping stuff, you got your bikes, the beach, the water. Uh, there's no pump track or playground or anything like that. But there is so much for kids of all ages to be doing. Davis Creek totally passes the ball test. I can easily throw, I could, I could throw a wiffle ball from the back of the site to the water. It totally passes our ball test. Uh, if you want to be near the water, it's hard to beat Davis Creek. It's awesome. Keep in mind the nearest sandy dump that we found that we've used, uh, we've now used it a couple of times, is the Caslow Community Campground. Uh, I think it would be just to the east of town. Uh, you'll see it there on a map if you take a look. That's the closest sandy dump that we saw. I think it's the only one in Caslow. So that's really the spot you're gonna have to go to. That's a 20 minute pull with all your black and gray water with you. So keep in mind when you're coming out of the campground or when you're gonna leave and plan to leave uh, Davis Creek, you are coming with your black and gray water. At the community campground, you're gonna to need to find the attendant, find the campground manager, and get them to unlock this ante. You're gonna to have to get out of the vehicle. You're gonna to have to look for this person. The couple of times we've been there, uh, it's not as though someone's attending right on site and you can just roll your window down and go. Uh, they do have a charge for the service as well. And unfortunately, it's not a coin operated one. You actually have to pay the attendant and they have to come and unlock it. Unlike some of them where you, you pay and it unlocks for your foot to open it. It's not that way. You've got to find someone to unlock it by hand and then be able to um, use the sandy while you're there. I would recommend going a little early if you can manage it because everybody is going there. Everybody in the area, whether it's the municipal campground or if it's Lost Ledge or Davis Creek, they're all going to that spot. I've seen it line up. Uh, fortunately, we've been there without much lineup in the past. Uh, I believe they charge $5 to, for the service as well at the municipal site. Um, so carry some, some cash with you. The park operator at Davis Creek was offering firewood at the time when we were there. Operators change from year to year, so uh, likely I think they like making the money. It saves the weight for us. We're happy to buy firewood when we use it. We would absolutely stay at Davis Creek again. We are going to stay at Davis Creek again. We haven't got a plan right now, but I can say it definitively. We will be back. This campground is an all-time favorite for us. Um, I, we highly recommend it. It's a 10 out of 10 to us. Uh, I think everybody that I talk to, we recommend go to this site. It's so fun. It's got everything we need. Uh, we absolutely love it.